pleased about that. He's finally going heel hook, damn it. No, I'm happy to um, go to this so that these guys can get the money. So I'm happy that actually one of them went first fight on the main card on the first time he put the bonus in place. I looked and thought, this could be an expensive night tonight, Graham. But, you know, um, fair play to Dean. Went for it, got it. So, yeah, bounty's his. That bounty now gets replaced with a flying triangle. So as a bounty gets claimed, it's gone. Excellent. Something else comes in. That way we can keep the whole bounty system fresh and once they're done, they're all. So yeah. Paddy Pimblett's going to be pleased about that, I think. I think Paddy will be hunting that flying triangle, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Graham, a fantastic event and a lot of variety with uh, submissions, knockouts, and uh, obviously a great scrap between Andy Young and uh, Paul Marin. Was that the perfect first event for Channel 4? That was awesome. Andy Young and uh, Paul Marin is definitely fight of the night. I haven't put them out there, but I'm giving that fight of the night. Um, Andy Young's progression since I last saw him fight is phenomenal. Can't wait to have him back. I think he just started off a little bit slower than Paul, and Paul clinched it. But what a fight, it was amazing, man, back and forth, yeah. Graham, as someone who's seen the rise of Irish MMA fighters, what do you think it is that maybe holding guys like Andy Young back or how Norman Park has taken a little, him a little bit of time to get some of the coverage that he deserves? Um, I think it's the fights they take. Uh, a, lot, a lot of the guys, they're not being, a lot of the Irish fighters, they're not being guided, their careers are not being guided properly. And they're quite happy to jump straight into fights, they're quite happy to take whatever fights they get. Um, so I think if they're guided a little bit more, and someone steps in and looks after them a little bit better, they might not be in the positions that they're in. But previously, I, I've seen over the past two years, they've just been jumping from one fight straight into the next one without actually thinking or taking time out to progress. So. Graham, obviously this is the first event since uh, UFC Dublin. Um, can I just ask, did you notice an added buzz coming off that event? And if so, or did you anticipate perhaps a greater level of interest coming into this Cage Warriors event? Um, I think the event that happened in Dublin last month picked the sport up and opened the eyes to the sport to a lot of people that weren't really into the sport. Um, I don't know if it's UFC or is it, is it Conor Mania. I think it's Conor Mania myself um, because people would ever see Conor. It wasn't the UFC. It was, it was crystal clear. Anyone in this country knows that. Um, so, yeah, and I think we had a, we had a backlash off that tonight. Um, full house, completely sold out. There was, I think there was 18 tickets left on the door. Um, when I went and spoke to the box office, so and they were gone towards the end of the night. Uh, Joseph Tuffy coming back after three years out of the cage. How do you think he looked? Um, tonight, I think he uh, he probably thought he was still in a ring, but I think for the first two rounds he just boxed. Um, so yeah, I might have a, I might tell him that when I see him that um, he's now back in MMA. He's not boxing anymore. But you know, he, he looked good in his feet. Um, I spoke to him afterwards, and he said uh, Damien was very tricky. Um, but you know, I, I think the kid is going to be a huge star. He was destined to be a huge star before he decided to go boxing. Um, as soon as he got out to the ground, he finished it like he used to do in his other 10 fights in MMA. So, yeah, I think slow start. Thought he was probably still boxing, but he, he'll get back into his rhythm. You know, it's his first time in the cage in about two, two and a half years. So, yeah, good, I think good performance. He got what he wanted, he got a win. Yeah. When it comes to Dublin and the whole buzz that we've seen, the growth of cage wires over here since the first event, in your opinion, what is the landmark Cage Warriors event of the year? You know, the UFC have maybe two or three big cards. I know you had Super Saturday earlier on this year, but what is it about Dublin that's so special? The New Year's Eve um, idea that we kicked into place, I think, settled down Cage Warriors in Dublin. We had, um, I've been wanting to do New Year's Eve since I took over uh, Cage Warriors three years ago. I think for the first two, I was told I was crazy to even attempt New Year's Eve. Uh, my thinking behind it was everyone on New Year's Eve looks for something to do. Every MMA fan in the world has no MMA, so it just made a lot of sense. So I think New Year's Eve Dublin is a landmark event for Cage Warriors. Um, the industry comes from Ireland to watch because they got something to do on New Year's Eve and it works really well. So I think that's our landmark event in Ireland, London, Super Saturday. And we'll be doing, I spoke to a few guys this um, this week while I was here. We're going to be doing weekenders in 2015. So we'll do four weekenders where Friday night will be an all-female Cage Warriors. Saturday will be Cage Warriors and Sunday afternoon will be the Cage Warriors Academy. There'll be four weekends next year. Is Night of Champions still an idea or has that been put on the back burner for a no, while? No, Night of Champions is going to happen. Yeah, that's going to, I can't say when, but it's going to happen. We've still got a few belts to fill and it's, it's got to work into a system where all the guys are able to have camp and fight at that similar time. So it's a timing thing, but it's happening. Yeah. Graeme, you, you mentioned that to me last week about the uh, three cards on in the weekend, the Friday, Saturday and Sunday nights. Um, have you any dates or, or cities in mind? Uh, we'll do, we're going to do Ireland. Ireland's going to be one of the weekenders. 
Um, London will be a weekender. Uh, we'll decide on the other two once we move ahead towards the end of the year. We've still got 10 events to hit this year, and we're hitting 24 next year. So there's still a hell of a lot of planning before we get to 2015, but there's already a whole lot of stuff on the 2015 task list to confirm. So there's a lot going on. Any updates on the uh, American card? We're working on that. It's uh, getting... I've obviously got to go to a lot of places. I haven't got a team. I've got teams in certain countries. Uh, the US is the one place I've got to uh, put some solid footing on with a team there. But I'm working and talking with another promotion there that we may um, acquire, which could be the base of Cage Warriors stepping in. Is it a well-known promotion, or can you shed any light? For now. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> place because since now you've kind of disbanded the, the pro committee that worked against you do you not think it'd be because I know you're committed to bringing it back there you don't want to say you screwed us over we're not going to come back yeah. would it not be an excellent way to come into the market and say you know what you turned us down last year here's three cards we, we, we look at that once we get the first show out of the way I think we need to do one show in the city to feel the atmosphere of that city, the, the interest in that city, and once we do one show in Sweden, then we look at it maybe a weekend or towards the end of 2015. Um, but I'm looking forward to going to Sweden. I think the, the SMMAF will be back in um, operation fully with a pro committee by October the 1st, they've told me. So October the 2nd, I'll pick the phone up and say, what's the deal? What's the criteria and how do we go forward? One more thing from that. You've seen the success of your Irish champions that have gone on, what they've gone on to achieve. And place they've gone on. Is there anyone in your mind that sticks out as potentially the next Irish world champion in cage wires? I know people are talking about Paul Redmond. If you go further down, they're also talking about Damian Rooney. Is there anyone in your mind that sticks out? Um, yeah. Those two are the two names you've nailed. Um, I think Karen Moore might be a little breakthrough after watching tonight and his fight against, his previous fight against Richie Knox. You know, I think the, that guy's solid, man. For a light heavy, I think he's going to be a big star. So he could be one to watch. You got a lot of very talented 145ers and no champion at the moment. Is there gonna is, is that gonna happen sooner rather than later? And are you thinking about a tournament format maybe for that? Um, that's quite possibly going to be a tournament. Um, there, there was there was two leading horses there where a fight could have happened, but I think one of those guys is um, dropping the bantam. So I think we may we may stick a tournament up for that for the way belt. Is that something that you'd be looking to do before the end of the year, or perhaps is yeah. that a great way to yeah. end Dublin, yeah. the, the New Year's Eve event? Yeah, we'll, we'll do it towards the end of the year. Um, by the end of the year, I'm hoping to have all the belts filled, so we enter 2015 with champions in every division. Yeah. Just to ask about uh, Jake Boswick, obviously he was riding an eight-fight winning streak, and with many clamouring for him to be riding there in title contention, how much does the instance of this week hurt him going forward? For cage wires. Uh, it's you know J Jake got caught up with his weight cut. He's a big weight cutter. Um, he came in, I think it was 22, 24 pounds overweight on the Thursday when he checked into the hotel. I think he still had a, when he got up Friday morning, he still had 10, maybe 12 to cut. Got it wrong. Maybe his diet wasn't right for that camp. I'll have a chat with him next week. See where he's at. The guy's still on a serious tear. You know, maybe we can get the Mud Peter, um, Jake fight back on pretty soon. So maybe we we'll look at that this week and see if we can get that fight back on. That was the, out of all the fights in the card, that was the one I was really looking forward to. You know, I spoke to I spoke to the crew here and I said, I'm sitting in the, I'm sitting in the stands for this fight. I won't be at the cage side. I want to see this fight. Um, so it's disappointing for me not to see it. I'm sure it's disappointing for everybody else as well. So I, we'll probably look this week to see if we can get that fight back on. Is there you know? any chance September 13th for that, or is that maybe a bit too early? I think it'd be probably a bit too early. Uh, obviously, Peter's uh, uh, Philip Mo Peter's ready. He's itching to get back in straight away. I don't know whether Jake can do that, but that card is stacked. There's two world title fights on there. You've got Mills and Marchman. You know, just, I don't think we can fit any more onto that card. Uh, but we'll probably have two shows in October that I, I've got to get to them. I'm in the Middle East next week that I've got to firm, firm those dates down. So maybe on, maybe on uh, one of them. You said about getting all the champions filled by the end of the year. Uh, Catherine Costigan feels she made a bit of a statement tonight that she could be in the running for the inaugural 105 female belt. Mm -hmm. uh, have you got an opinion on that or any other ladies in mind who may contest it? My, my only, like, Catherine deserves uh, a title shot. She deserves to fight for a belt. My only problem with that is the division. she's ran through the division and who's there to give her a fight for that belt. Um, we'll have a look and see if we can pull in um, a decent fighter, whether stateside or this side of the water. And if we can get someone that's credible, to give Catherine a fight for a belt, and we'll have a look at that, yeah. But it's, the, the atom weight is, is pretty slim, slim pickings. 
is it a case for Catherine that she may have to look at somewhere like Invicta in order to, to fight a lot more sort of frequently? And, and would you would you be happy for her to take that opportunity? Should it, should it be presented to her? Because quite frankly, she's a star in the making. She's a star in the making. And, you know, if, if there's fights in Invicta Faro, then so be it. You know, if, if, if there's no fighters on the roster or there's no available fighters for us to get for Catherine, then, you know, we just got to put her somewhere she can get those fights and let her progress the career. And you spoke about um, taking a card outside of Dublin, somewhere in Ireland. Um, obviously, with Cashin Costigan doing so well, was there any possibility that could go to Limerick, maybe if she had a title to maybe defend it there? I'm actually looking at Westport. I think Westport would be an amazing place to put a show on. So maybe she can defend in Westport if we can find a venue. Yeah, where where is a potential venue in Westport? I don't know. I've let that I've let that to the crew to try and find a venue for me. Maybe we'll do an outdoor one. <laughs> <laughs> Pro Patrick. But, um, that show would it, uh, the show outside of Dublin would it more than likely be in Cork or would it be maybe up the north? Um, if if we're going to step outside Dublin, we might have a look at Northern Ireland. Um, I, I don't I don't think going too far south or going too far north, you kind of shutting some clubs up because it's, it's, it's a bit of a travel. Yeah. You know, I, I know it's not a massive travel, but it is for guys who would come to shows in Dublin. So I've said before, Dublin is a very good central point for the whole community and the industry to, to meet and, and everyone can get there. And it's, it's a, an equal travel distance for everyone to come. So we'll have a look. But I like Westport. Graham, you announced this week that you're going to be having a show in the Copper Box. Um, would you ever step outside the Helix in Dublin at a different venue? Uh, well, the contract with the Helix is till New Year's Eve, so maybe we look at something after the New Year's Eve fight's finished. We close, we bring the curtain down on the uh, this 2014 World Tour on New Year's Eve here in the Helix. We maybe look for something a little bit bigger come February. We'll probably come uh, any potential venues or the S or something like that? A few. We'll have a look at them. Um, I'll come back. I'll come back in a month or so. I'll come back for, during the week and I'll have a look around and see what options are there, and uh, we'll sign with somebody else for. The remainder of that for, for 2015 for you know the, the, the sport is growing there's more interest in the sport with the channel four signing with cage warriors and everything else is going on you know fingers crossed the sport grows a bit bigger um and we can get uh, bigger uh, bigger crowds into the arenas just one more thing on ireland uh, with the mention of northern ireland what's like local promotions have gone up against cage warriors before in ireland and now before the end of the year you've got two local promotions going against each other on the same date in my opinion, it's very detrimental to the sport over here. Fighters are torn, and you're just going to see reduced numbers at these events. Um, what's your take on it? Do you think these guys, they're holding the sport back by doing stuff like that and making it petty, trying to go one against each other, when really it's, you're the small fish in a pond that's dominated by cage wires? Um, it would be nice for promotions, smaller promotions, to do shows where they can be spread out. So it, it's good for all the clubs and the fighters. But some promotions are in this for ticket money. They, you know, there's, there's no, there's no grey area in this. Some guys are in this for ticket money. Some guys are in this for the sport. So uh, does that include in the UK as well, or is that an Irish? You know, thing? it's 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 in the UK too. Some some promotions are there to make money on the door, and they run the shows to make money. Other promotions are here um, for the sport to build the sport, and you know, with Cage Wars, I said from the beginning three years ago. I don't care if there's just me and Ian Dean sitting in the cage side watching the shows or if there's 10,000 people watching them. We're here for the sport and we're here to build the fighters and the sport and we've been doing that for three years now. Graham, just to add to that point, since including the New Year's Eve event, um, Cage Warriors have had triple, trebled the number of professional fights than the combined other MMA promotions in Ireland. Does that worry you, the lack of other promotions putting on professional fights in uh, this country? No, no. I mean, there's, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of shows out there providing options for professional fighters and they have to learn and develop somewhere you know a lot of them come into cage warriors as debut pro guys are but a lot of them would be coming in guys who have fought amateur on the undercard so we've watched them and taken them in but it, there's options there for the pro guys but they've got to learn and develop somewhere and, and the, the rosters are pretty stacked in cage warriors so coming in there off the bat having not fought in other shows is it's pretty deep waters just finally the amateur card this evening was absolutely unbelievable perhaps worth the entrance fee alone, uh, did you enjoy it yourself? Awesome, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, that um, AO Daly and uh, Crosby fight was immense. I really enjoyed that. And um, there was another fight, the uh, Gallagher, and well, yeah, great fight. Great fight, I enjoyed it. Yeah.
you know, with, with Channel 4 being here and, and sort of having watched how, how the th it, it didn't seem like there was a break in stride whatsoever at all. Was was there anything that you had to do a little bit differently for, for tonight, or did it was it just business as usual? Because certainly that's how it seemed. Business as usual, man. I've said before, Cage Warriors is a machine. Once we start, and I say this to the, in, in the rules meeting with all the fighters, there's um, fight times in the changing rooms, all around the corridors. Every fighter knows what time he's fighting from when he walks into this venue. And that never changes. They're never late. It's never over. If it says 6 o'clock they're fighting, they're fighting at 6 o'clock. And once that fight starts, once the fights start, we run through. Were there any demands that Channel 4 made that perhaps we as media don't know about that you can share? Was there anything that they asked you to do differently or anything that they wanted to add or bring to the, to, to the event or if they left it entirely in your hands? They left it in our hands. Um, we did a test highlight show for them on um, Super Saturday sent it into them, they came back with some comments um, and overall they were generally blown away by the, the production value, uh, the commentary, the, the lighting, everything that we did. So yeah, they left it in our hands and once they got the test run, they came back and said, we're really happy with this, we're going to go with it. Um, it's on Channel 4, on demand, it's on demand so people can watch it, the, the highlights that go on, they'll, they'll show. We'll always work from the top back with these eight Channel 4 shows, so the main event we showed in full, co-main event in full. And the fights before that would be the highlight finishes of um, what went on in those fights. Should every fight finish in the first round, it'd be great because then we can show the whole card. Yeah. But you know, you, you, Rome wasn't built in a day, and we got to start somewhere. And I've said previously, we're dating. Channel Four and Cage Warriors are on a date, and uh, if we happen to fall in love with each other, we'll get married in January. <laughs> Graham, just maybe last question. Right? One thing here to clear it up: a couple of weeks ago, you put up a thing um, asking who is the Irish MMA journalist or the Irish MMA whatever, and make themselves known what was behind it is there a contract <laughs> for someone here just yeah there's, there's, there's an opportunity for two guys coming up um, so I wanted to know who is obviously I don't get a chance to follow everything um, I'm not on Facebook like the rest of the industry is so I've kind of deleted Facebook a year and a half, a year and a half two years ago so uh, sometimes I've got a, the page that's run there under my name is, is not me behind it, but sometimes I'll jump in and put a question on the final information of who's who and who's walks. I don't get to read all the websites, I don't get to follow the industry like I do. So yeah, there's um, opportunities going to arise in the next couple of months for two talented guys in the Irish.